European Union remain on the cusp of a Brexit deal on Christmas Eve as Prime Minister Boris Johnson is expected to address the nation. This comes four and a half years after UK chose to leave the bloc. While the UK left the EU at the end of January, it still remains un under its trading rules until the 31st of December. If a deal is not signed off by then, tariffs will come into force. Talks have continued between the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen throughout Wednesday. Negotiators are now in the final phase of agreeing on a post-Brexit trade deal. At stake is Europe's share of the 650 million euro annual catch of fish in British waters. A call to finalize the deal between the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson and the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen is expected anytime soon. The UK Parliament is also expected to be recalled to vote on the deal with 30 December the most likely date for the vote. For more on these developments, we have Oli Barad joining us uh, from London. Hi, Oli. What more do we know in terms of the agreement that is being reached on by the two sides? Time is definitely running out, and the UK is dealing with these negotiations, the deadlock which has persisted for months. On the other hand, there is the new coronavirus strain, so it's a double whammy for the UK. It's a double whammy for the UK. They are still hopeful they can reach a deal between the two sides this Christmas Eve and not run potentially into Christmas Day or have to pause talks and come back to them after Christmas. We were actually given pretty strong indications overnight that there was going to be a deal uh, last European evening. We were seeing camera crews being urged to uh, get to Downing Street in London and to the Berlaymont building in Brussels uh, for potential press conferences from Boris Johnson, the British Prime Minister, and the European Commission uh, President Ursula von der Leyen. So that gives you an indication how close uh, both sides thought they were at that point. But we also knew that legal texts were still being worked through, uh, lawyers looking at the language to make sure there's nothing in those documents that could come back and cause problems down the line, any ambiguities, and also final, final discussions on that issue of fish, that tricky issue of fish. And we understand that that is what they are still talking about at this point, getting as specific as individual species in uh, British waters and how much or, or how little the, the European quota will be come uh, next year, but also in several years' time, because there's going to be a transition period as European access to British waters winds down. The British appear to have uh, won a bit of a victory in terms of what's called so-called dynamic alignment. That was the European Union wanting Britain not only to sign up to rules and regulations and standards for the long term, but also to be able to be unilaterally punished if it started to diverge. It is a bit weaker than that, the arrangement that the Europeans and the British have come to. There are all sorts of areas uh, in this uh, document that are going to be scrutinised over the coming days, but also over the coming months and years as people try and work out who won, who lost, in what areas, uh, and both sides, they will be certainly claiming victory once that deal is finally reached. But this comes at a time when there are widespread restrictions vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, travel from the UK. Now that the France border issue uh, continues to linger on, there is some respite, of course, uh, with the traffic being allowed into uh, France. But uh, there will be those sticking issues uh, that continue to surface over the next few weeks. Potentially, yes, it is going to take some time to ease the backlog of lorries in southern England at the moment. It was actually interesting, as the European Union, the European Commission and Britain were nearing the end of their discussions on their Brexit trade deal, the European Commission's Transport Commissioner was uh, strongly criticising France for having closed its border to freight and talked about having caused supply chain disruption, the type we haven't seen since March when the pandemic was beginning to unfold in Europe praising the UK for its efforts to get things moving again and the stance that it had taken. So as we were coming to the end of difficult talks between the UK 
and the EU. Uh, in another area, the EU was praising the UK and criticising an EU member state, France. But all of that type of issue are, are, are going to continue. The UK and the EU will have a strong um, and close relationship in the future. It appears from the arrangement that they are uh, striking now. One of the other areas, of course, of difficulty for Boris Johnson will be bringing this deal back to the UK, selling it to a domestic audience, but particularly some of those hardline Brexiteer Eurosceptic MPs in his own party. They say they'll be studying every line of the text that comes back to them. Oliver Rad, appreciate you joining us. Uh, we'll of course coming back to you as and when further updates trickle in. Seeking to censor U.S. media, Russian lawmakers have passed bills which would grant authorities the power to block access to YouTube, Twitter and Facebook. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.